Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan Bailey from Plagiarism Today and I am back. Thank you very much for your patience. I'm happy to be here. Hope at least some of you missed me. I know it's been far too long. Uh, let's see, we had Halloween, then I got sick after Halloween, kind of standard. Then I had a conference, then I got sick from the conference. Lovely. It's been November, the uh, month of illness, it seems. Uh, and in fact, I'm not even feeling 100% today, but got to get back in the saddle at some point in no time like the present. So... I want to jump in, but reality is, since I've done one of these videos, way too many copyright stories are broken. So, yeah, there's no way in heck I'm going to cover them all. So instead, I'm going to focus on one that has been intriguing me and been talked about a lot on the internet, and that involves an, an anonymous nine-year-old girl in Finland. Uh, the long and short of it is, um, this girl was apparently looking for a look for music from a local artist and somehow ended up on the Pirate Bay where she downloaded a honeypot torrent put there by the CIAPC, a local Finnish anti-piracy group. And as a result of having downloaded it, her father received a call, sort of a notification, hey, we tracked this download. They demanded 600 euros in a settlement. He declined. The police then came and confiscated, among other things, I'm assuming, her Winnie the Pooh laptop. And now there's a huge public outcry about it. And long story short, people are very upset. And that's understandable. This type of story puts people like me in an awkward position. I believe that copyright overall is a good thing. I think the idea that content creators, people invest the time, money, resources, energy, expertise, all that into creating new content, I believe they should have the right to control and enforce that work, at least to a reasonable degree. However, I also believe that you can enforce things to your detriment, and I think that's what's happening here. And a good example, um, in sort of a physical world example, is trespassing laws. At some point, you go from being a guy who is reasonably protecting his property and his space to being a guy who's just yelling at kids to get off his lawn. You know, there, there, there's a point there, there's a line, and I believe the CIAPC has crossed it in this particular case. Um, getting police involvement in just, you know, a one-album download that didn't even work it's pretty ludicrous even before you bring in the nine-year-old girl and Winnie the Pooh laptop element. And this type of situation really has people like me worried because whenever you see one act of insanity on this side, the other side doesn't go, okay, now we can have a reasonable, rational discussion, discussion, you've gone too far, blah, 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 blah. No, they respond with equal extremism and try to push that pendulum as far their way as they can, oftentimes, you know, creating a situation that's even worse in many respects. So, yeah, you know, this doesn't behoove reasonable discussion. It doesn't behoove anything. And the long and short of it is I don't really see good things coming out of the conversation because of this. I mean, people like me, you know, the allegation, you're in favor of confiscating nine-year-olds Winnie the Pooh laptops. And I, of course I'm not. Don't be daft. That's insane. Being in favor of reasonable copyright protection and reasonable copyright enforcement doesn't mean you support the extremist actions of certain organizations. That's not true. And that's just, you know, a, a false, sort of a, a false comparison there. But anyway, so that's one element of this story that really has me bugged. But the other element of this, and this is something that isn't being talked about a lot, and I'm not really sure why, is I want to know how a nine-year-old girl ended up on the Pirate Bay. Even putting that whole, you know, piracy issue aside, the Pirate Bay is not a site you really want nine-year-old girls on, is it? I mean, stop and really think about a lot of the content on there. You probably don't want nine-year-olds on there. So how does she get there? Well, it seems what the article is alluding to and what you know people are pointing to is that she simply Googled this artist's name and was directed to the Pirate Bay. And I have to say, I did a few searches for this artist and I had words like download or MP3. And sure enough, the Pirate Bay came up as a routinely high-ranking result. So it's not like that's technically impossible, but obviously... She was experienced enough with BitTorrent downloads to make the download, so that in itself raises another question, but let's stick to how she ended up on the Pirate Bay for the moment. If that's how she got there, that's kind of a double fail by Google. A, Google had promised previously that they were going to um, sort of downgrade illegitimate results and sort of promote um, the legitimate services. And if that's the case, then that's a failure on that front by Google. Because I think it can all be pretty clear, Pirate Bay, not likely a legitimate result for this person's content. Um, the other side of the coin is, though, that, that Google didn't send her to a BitTorrent that worked. It was to a honeypot that didn't have the actual content. Of course, that raises issues on whether or not she actually infringed copyright. Totally separate discussion there, too. But, yeah, so not only did they send her to an illegitimate result, they sent her to an illegitimate result that doesn't work, doesn't do anything. 
So double fail by Google if that's the case. Google really needs to sort of take a look at how it's handling um, these types of cases and these types of searches if that's the case. The other possibility, and this is I think a little bit more frightening, is that she's just experienced with the Pirate Bay and went there on her own and maybe you know they're referencing Google just kind of you know she also Googled it and it's unclear like I said the process she took I don't even know if she remembers the process she took at this time so anyways I have some pretty serious questions about that and that's a part of this conversation no one's talking about because everyone's so understandably upset about the conversation on the laptop but obviously there's a lot more and a lot of nuance to the story that needs to be discussed and I don't have the answers because no one's asking the questions of this particular girl or these people. So, I guess we're just going to have to wait and find out later. Well, on that note, everyone, I have gotten to get to work. A ton of things going on. So, until tomorrow, this is Jonathan Bailey, signing off.